YouTube. You know what? I have an empty spot over there on my wall that uh, needs to get filled. And I have a drawer full of drills that I could be using for something else. So let's build a drill charging station to take care of that. Now I have a bunch of pallet wood over here that I could use, but I also have these. Now, holy crap, there's a lot of dust on there. There's a lot of dust on there because they've been in my ceiling forever. Now you may have seen me use the sum of this table for my wood cart. You may also have seen it for my clamp rack. Now those turned out pretty cool. So I'm gonna try to continue that and keep as many of these wonderful curves as possible. Is it easy? Not likely, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So let's get this tore apart and see what kind of wood we can salvage from this here POS. Okay, to start this project, let's start with a checklist. First, we need measurements. Then we need a place to put tool bits. We need a place to put drills. We need a place to put chargers. And we need a place to store batteries. We also need a place to plug in said chargers. That's why I put this plug in this location because I plan to put the drill charging station here the whole time. Being a manufactured table, I'm going to go ahead and assume that they're the same at the top as they are at the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and mark them here. Bottom. Bottom. That way I know both sides are the same. So there was one other detail that I failed to mention. You should check for inside and outside because on this table there are three holes on one side and two holes on the other side. That would make a difference in them being the same. So I've decided that I only want the curves on the front of this drill charging station. So we have to take the curves off the back. It's not going to sit well on the fence on my table saw. So I'm going to go ahead and brad nail a piece of scrap wood to the back side of this so I can run it through the table saw. So on social media you see two main types of drill charging stations. You see the down and dirty, squared off feed looking ones like we have here. Or you see the PVC ones that are nice and rounded but they look like PVC. So I like the PVC idea, but I want to use wood. So that's where this next part comes in. These are some offcuts from my miter station and a cutting board that I screwed the juice groove up on. So I measured the heads on my drill and I think that three inch bit that I bought from my dad's CB disc will be large enough to house these drills. So I'm going to cut these off at four inches. I think four inches is going to be plenty. Then we'll go over to the planer and we'll run them through just to knock the glue squeeze out off. That way I got a nice clean glue surface. And well, what's a good glue surface without some glue? So I put an F ton of glue on it because I thought, hey, more glue, more hold. Nope, that is not the case. You know what more glue causes? More glue squeeze out. Guess what you got to do with glue squeeze out? You got to clean it up. So more glue is not the answer. So let's put some more clamps on it. Because more clamps equals more hold. <laughs> nope. You know what more clamps equals? That's right. More squeeze out. So you got to go back clean that up. And well... In YouTube fashion, let's go ahead and uh, put every clamp I got in the shop on it because that'll make it hold tighter. Nope, just more squeeze out. I'm pretty sure at this point I've got glue in every single nook and cranny in that block. 
So while that dries, let's go ahead and try to make sure that these sides are exactly the same. Now, looking at them, I could tell you they're not the, exactly the same. So I'm going to have to do a little work to get these prepped and looking good. So I broke out my oscillating spindle sander. And after I was done here, they were most certainly the same. This is one of them tools I don't use a whole lot. But it sure is awful handy when I do need it. It works great for stuff like this. And then, once we get done with that and we know everything's all the same, I can go over to my router and put a chamfer on it. Now, I've made one pass with a bit kind of low, and then I raised it up until I got the look I was looking for. And then, I ran it around all three edges. After a couple of hours of working on other stuff, my block is now dried, and now it's time to get the rest of that squeeze out off that block. So we run it through the planer, and this block is looking freaking great. After the planer, we go over to the miter saw. We're going to go ahead and square up one inch and then cut this thing to length. That way we can go ahead and start getting it laid out for the holes I need for my drills. All of the wood in this four by four and a half block are hardwood boards from some pallets. Now, it is at this point that I realized that I think I might need a new saw blade because it's not doing this block very well at all. Once we've got it all squared up and cut to length, we can go ahead and start laying it out. Now I want the block to follow the curves of these sides. So I clamped it in place and drew lines because those lines are going to be important later on. So at this point, this block is four by four and a half. I am drilling in the direction of the four and a half. This hole saw only goes inch and seven eighths deep. So to pull off this task, I have to drill to the inch and seven eighths depth, stop, drill it with a Forstner bit in the center, that way I can use a chisel to knock it out, drill it again inch and seven eighths deep, Forstner bit again, chisel again, and then flip it over and catch the last inch and seven eighths on the other side. That way I have a nice clean hole on both sides with very little tear out. This was certainly a process which is probably why you don't see this kind of drill charging station all over YouTube or any of your other social media because it is a lot of work and it makes a considerable mess. I mean, it took several, several passes on that drill press just to get one hole drilled. And the mess, holy cow, look at that mess. And it's all up in my drill chargers. Well, I guess that's why I need a drill charging station. But we'll go ahead and clean that up real quick. Remember that curved line from earlier? Yeah, well, it's coming into play right now. I'm going to go ahead and kind of pick away at that line, raising my blade up and moving it to different angles because I will be sanding this here in a little bit and I want to remove the bulk of that corner because I don't want to do it all with a sander. It's hardwood and not easy to sand at all. And I started out with that random orbit sander with like some 40 grit. It wasn't cutting it. I had to break out a belt sander and man, I was just covered in dust. My whole shop was covered in dust. And then once I got it ate down to where I wanted it, we'd go back with a random orbit and uh, get her all nice and pretty. So I still have a lot to do with that block, but first I want to cut out the shelf that I'm going to be using to store my batteries on. I got this piece of half inch birch plywood, it blows, and I'm going to put some edge banding on the front of it. While I'm working on the block, that'll give the edge banding time to dry. I'm just going to use some glue and brads for it and then we'll set it off to the side. 
I'm trying to follow an order of operations that makes all of the cuts I'm making as easy as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and put the round over on the front of these holes while it's all in one piece. Because trying to put that round over on after I cut the bottoms out, it would have made it a little bit harder. Now you can see over here, I am trying to cut the bottoms out, see where I want that to land. I had planned to use the depth stop on my miter saw, or the trenching feature, but it doesn't stop that high. You have to go much lower to be able to use it. And as you can see here, that 3 inch hole saw was not big enough. Well, not for this particular drill anyways. Let me check the other drill. Oh yeah, it's great for that drill. Little tiny Milwaukee sons of fucking wah. Yeah, anyway, let's keep going. So I went ahead and just kind of cut them down to the same line on the front of the board here. And it works out pretty good. Turns out real nice. So to get that hole a little bigger so that it fits my cobalt drill, I put it back on that oscillating... Uh, spindle sander and that wallered that hole out a little bit and then we're going to put a chamfer on the inside of this so that the drill slides in real nice and then we can start assembling it for the back of it i am just going to use two three quarter inch by three inch pine pallet boards because i have these pine pallet board offcuts laying all over the place in many different sizes found a couple that were long enough threw some pocket holes in them, and we're just going to pocket hole and glue them in. Now the top one, I cut a 45 degree chamfer on, and we're going to use that as a cleat to hold it onto the wall until we get it screwed in. Once we get the sides attached to the back, we can go ahead and turn it around, flip it over, and attach the bottom block. I'm going to hold this bottom block in here, with the same black pocket hole screws that I buy from Lowe's. I'm just going to run them in from the outside because I like the way they look. If you've been following my channel for any amount of time, you know I think they look like upholstery buttons and I'm kind of fond of that look myself. So having the screws show on the outside doesn't matter. Plus, it's shop furniture. All my shop furniture has those. Then we can tap the shelf in and you guessed it, we're going to run some more of them screws in right from the outside. So that half inch piece of birch plywood from earlier wasn't bought just to make a shelf. We are going to use that to make the back and mount the drill chargers to this station. So I'm just marking it because I want a gap there to run my wires through. And before I put that piece of birch plywood in place, Let's go ahead and mount the cleat that this will hang on. We'll get it all level before that back's in place. That way, all I got to do is just lift it up and throw it on there when I'm ready to mount it permanently. So if you watch as much YouTube as I do, you have probably seen this trick before. But if you haven't, pay attention. So what you do is you take your green tape or your blue tape, whatever color you use, you lay it over your hanging thingies on the back of your charger. Then you take a punch or a screwdriver and punch a hole right at the top of each one of them little hangy thingies. Then you take your tape off and you go over to where you're going to hang your drill charger, measure where you want the center of this thing at, and just stick your tape on there. This is an amazing hack. I don't know why it took me so long to see this. And then you just run your screws in right where you punch those holes. It's freaking awesome. And then all you got to do is bring your charger over and, well, try to find those holes. And if it's a little too loose, just tighten them up a little bit and try to find your holes again. And just like that, boom. Bob's your uncle. Perfect. I don't know if you noticed or not, but my Ryobi and my Cobalt chargers, the plug comes out the back. The Milwaukee, 
Yeah, well, they got to be difficult and go out the freaking front. So now I got to drill a hole in my plywood and it's not going to look as clean, but you know, I guess it is what it is. That's what you get for buying your super expensive tools. But, you know, we'll put a little grommet in there. It'll look all nice and clean eventually, I guess. So, up to this point in my shop renovation, all of my shop furniture has been done in the aged barrel stain from Minwax. And all the shop fixtures have been left natural, like the pallet wood walls. Well, this has got kind of a cutting board look, and I wanted to make it pop as much as possible. So, I took some of the General Finishes Satin Armor Seal, the oil base and I applied it and man it does it makes this cutting board look pop like nobody's business and then the pine on the outside it makes that look pretty too I gotta mount this plywood to the side somehow because I don't want it falling out when I'm grabbing my chargers so I found the best way to do that was to take some pieces that I took off the table earlier and cut them in half. And I sunk a couple of screws in them and now that's secured to the sides. From the front, I could take two more screws and run them right into them runners and it'll hold nice and tight. I didn't show it here, but I did mount a surge protector in behind that plywood. That way I could plug all three chargers into it and they could stay plugged in all the time. And there will only be one cable coming out of the bottom of the charging station instead of three. And it looks much cleaner that way. With everything covered in finish and all of the chargers fastened securely, I went ahead and ran two screws into that bottom board to secure it to the wall. That way if somebody bumps it, it doesn't fall off. And it's not flopping around when I go to grab my batteries and my drills out of there. Look at that, nice and snug. So now we gotta start filling it up. We gotta check the last box. I need storage for all of my most used bits. Now some people like to use drawers some people like to drill holes, and those are fine ways to store bits. But the drawers, you have to fumble around and dig. The holes, well, they're holes. So I went down to the Harbor Freight, and I got me two of these magnetic strips. These things are fantastic. And as I started putting all of my bits on here, I realized that my OCD had gotten the better of me. So we're going to go ahead and jump ahead. So I got everything in here and everything is working great. All the chargers are easily accessible in, out, Everything fits good. All my bits, easily changeable. And it's deep enough, I don't even have to take them out of the drill. I can leave my favorite ones in there. Everything is easily grabbable and replaceable. Highly visible. And you could store batteries up here on this shelf, but I only have four batteries, so they're either in the drill or on the charger, you know, so it's awesome. This looks great. Everything looks fantastic. I did have to rearrange my wall a little bit because now I have a place to hide the cord for my grinder. I just ran it up along the bottom, nice and neat, because I didn't like my grinder down there. When I put that upper cabinet in, I couldn't leave it folded up, and uh, it was kind of aggravating me a little, because I don't use it a lot, but when I do need it, I need it in a hurry. I need to be done with it in a hurry. I don't want to set it up, use it, take it down, put it away. So this way, it gets to stay up all the time, 
and it is just a C hair short enough that it doesn't interfere with the fence on my miter saw. And most of the time, it will likely be living like this anyways. Therefore, it's certainly not going to bother my miter saw. And it's definitely not going to bother my drill station here. So that's all I got for you guys this week. Uh, yeah, that's it. I'll see y'all next time.